double needle split needle bar, 3 8 gauge, large bobbins, console, 369 RB2. So anytime you use a machine, it's good to drop the oil in there, keep it a little oiled, and always drop a little oil on the bobbins. Just a couple of shots, and then give it a couple of jerks back and forth, so they uh, they stay lubricated. Because since it's new, they're new hooks you get threads that end out getting stuck. This thread gets knots and they'll get stuck in in here, you see? Because, see there's a little space sometimes here? So that thread will get stuck and then it'll jam up your machine and you think the machine is broken. So it's always good to oil it and hold your threads. Then if you're gonna go so if you're gonna to go to the to the bobbins. You see how they're they're put in into place here. You always want to go the opposite way. So you're going in here, then you're gonna go pass it through the uh, the little opening here. Once you get it through that little opening. You want to get go through this little, loop it in through the little eyelet, so you get that little play, and then you're going back in here, and then once you get it up there, you're coming up. Always good to trim your thread so you can always get it through the smaller holes without trying to. And then once you got it in, I hold the bobbins with my fingers like that. Make sure it gets in there, locks in place. Once it's locked in place, put your little safety thing down and test it. Same thing with this one. You see how this one is? It's going in like the opposite. A lot of people think it's this way because that's where it's turning, but it's always good to put it the way they ask, opposite, and there you are again. See where you're putting your 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 tension. I didn't do it on the other side. I'm, I'm gonna fix the other side so you get it the right way. So you gotta be careful because sometimes you forget. So it's always good to practice and learn because you end up forgetting. See? We go, he goes through here, and then you're looping it. That way you got that tension, and then you're going back up. So it's good to see the little common errors even somebody that's been doing this for a long time can make, and then you'll blame that the machine is not working properly. So once you got it back in there, you're in. I make sure my both tensions are good and then I'll take one of these off. Let's take the far side off and I'm not going to loop the other ones because it's very common. You can, you're going through here, you can turn it here. I like to do it right, I like to go straight just like this one. Why? Because if you having problems with your tension, you know that ain't the problem here and it's not knotting down. You see, same thing here. It's looping around. It's okay. But if you have a problem that you're having too much tension, start taking it off and leave it like this straight through. Not oval because it's going to give you a little bit of more friction. So I go here. So I put my hand here. I hold it. And I go around this little guide. Once I go through the guide, I'm coming down, I'm going back up, and then I'm gonna go 12 o'clock. I'm holding it here still with my right hand, 
clock and it clicks into place. Now I play, pull the tension a little bit, go through the guides, your, your right hook, your right side always goes to the bottom. Two hands and I'm coming through here with the, uh, doesn't matter which needle you're gonna go first. Left to right, right to left. And you're going back through the guides. And then your, your, your opposite of what you're thinking, the needle uh, track is in the inside and your gib is on the outside. So you're threading from the inside out. There again, same thing with this one. Put it into the little guide there from inside out. Once you got it inside out, then you can do this. You can come in here to make sure that everything's timed and, and balanced right. I come up right here and I'm pulling both of my threads. They should both smoothly come out. You take a uh, tweezer. I'm using a scissor because I don't have my tweezer here. And I'm bringing them up. Once you bring them up, your threads to the back. Close your, and you're ready to sew. I'm gonna turn the machine on. I suggest that you come down and you see your servo motor. I put it at the lowest setting. Anytime you're starting a new machine, you're gonna get uh, to know it. Always put your setting to the lowest possible thing because it's gonna take you a while to practice. So right here, I'm using a knee lifter, I'm coming up. See how the two threads that came out? That's wrong. What you wanna do is bring the bottom ones out, put the back ones to the back, get your material set up, put your material in here. Now I can, I can just, I can sew now, or I can bring my, my threads up or you can do this when you when you if you want to start with both hands and the machine like this is good i do is i pinch both threads with the presser foot and then i go see there's going to be no tangling you got one needle working there now you got both needles so you can clip these and then you can go Okay, so we have to set up the machine a little bit more. So we have to test, tighten the tensions. And we're gonna put it into zero. Lock your needles in place. There, both needles are locked in place. So we're still trying the machine very slow. All right, so, all right, since we're setting up the machine, this was moved and it was rubbing on here. That's what the noise was. Now it's not making the noise, but we're gonna take the time right now and we're just gonna use this lubricating and we're just gonna spray, since it's a new machine, it's never been sewn. This is the first time. So I'm just spraying this just to make sure it's a little lubricant. And then we're going to put it on here. And then you can see it's running smooth. So now we're checking this out. We see one tension loose. So we're going to keep tightening that and then we're gonna try. See, every time I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move it with my hands first to make sure that the machine is not gonna get jammed up or something is not gonna be forced and then you're gonna be into a, 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 a repair that you can't handle. So every time, see, 
If it gets jammed like that, you're gonna shake it loose like this. See, anybody can jam a machine. And when you jam it, that's when your problems are gonna come. So once you get it tangled like that, just cut it, go back into here, remove it nice and slow, remove those, and that's how you that's how you keep a machine from having major problems when you first purchase a machine or, or getting used to a machine. So same thing, I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna make sure it's gonna lift right. Once I lift right, I'm gonna take my threads out, close my hatch, and put my threads to the back. Again, we're gonna try. We're gonna hold both. This time we're holding the threads. And I'm gonna go one, two, three. Once I've done the three and it's on the stroke up, and I put both hands on and I try the machine. See? Good. So here, here I had a, a little tension problem. So here I'm too tight. So we, we're gonna loosen it back, set up. See, I'm, I'm still in trial and error. I, you, you haven't seen me break out a motorcycle seat or a boat seat and start sewing with the machine. Everything's a process, everything's a trial. This is 138 thread also. This is a, 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 a Sun U, uh, UVR thread. So it's, it's a harder thread to sew. Clip all your threads, get them out of the way. And again, see? I can go here. Now I can lift. So it's sewing better. We got our tensions right. So now we're gonna go to the other side again. Always start by hand first. See, I'm breaking in the machine little by little, trying to get the flaws out of it before I go to the next level. see our stitch got a lot better that's one and that one this is an old stitch so I'm gonna get another piece of material and try the machine again okay I got everything set up I did my little adjustments to the to the to the machine and now we're gonna start on a fresh thing piece of material I'm always gonna start with my hand little back tacking. Now I'm going to go forward. Obviously some of the tensions. Then we're going to go. We, we, we jammed some thread, so it, it broke this. So I'm going to go in here and check out what's happening. Oh, see, we're getting low on thread and this thing wasn't it wasn't properly it wasn't properly uh, wound so I'm gonna start all I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna do a bobbin take one of these off take this one off and I'm gonna cut my my thread here 
and then I'm gonna come here and wind, wind the bobbin. I'm gonna put it here. And I'm gonna go around here. And I can, I can leave it like that. Or I like to do is go right to the top. So it'll never come off of that. Then I come to here to the bobbin right there. And I'm gonna hold it here. Make sure no threads are. <laughs> now you make sure you got a nice tight bobbin. So at the end, when you're doing your project, your your bobbin is always tight from the beginning to the end, and you're not going to have problems with the sewing. This one still has a lot, but I'm gonna do another one here. Back in. Get all your threads out of the way so they don't get jammed up. That's very important, you see? We jammed it up in here. That's not good. That's a common mistake everybody makes, including the mechanic. One, two. sure it engages. I do not be so engaged. Double good down around down. Huh? I had to take it off the cycle. There. Do one stitch. Take it off, and then you got it. So as you practice, you're gonna get better than doing it the way I was doing it. So you got a double needle, walking foot, triple feed. It's, it's feeding from the, the top, and it's also a needle feed. See the needles are moving? So you got the compre compressing foot, you have a walking foot, and you have a needle feed. Double bobbin, large bobbins, and your, your stitch length is here. So once you're gonna go push your stitch in, here it's at, a, at its longer stitch. So if you're gonna go, that's giving you uh, the maximum stitch, you can shorten it here, which it gives you a smaller stitch. And you can see. That at that level, it starts shortening the stitch, which everybody likes the big stitch. So you're gonna go here. And then you have here if you if you jam it up, it's gonna pop the safety clutch so you can put it back into into time in here when it falls into place.